everyone. This is our weekly healing service. And this week, it's a special service because we are in Healing Awareness Week, a time when we reflect on the importance of healing and we all take part in various healing activities. I'd like to welcome you. My name is Al Hurst. I am the Communications Director of the Spirit Chase National Union. So I'd like to begin by introducing you to our speakers for this service here today. First of all, I'd like to introduce to you Minister David Bruton. And Minister David Bruton is the President of the Spiritualist National Union. I would also like to introduce to you Tim Smith. Tim is a diploma holder of the Spiritualist National Union, and both Tim and David are representatives to the Healing Forum, who are responsible for Healing Awareness Week. So first of all, as always, we meet in the presence of God, in community and communion. And as such, I invite David to open our time together in prayer. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We meet together this evening with a very special purpose. The power of healing is a power that can bring transformation not only into our own lives, but into the lives of many other people. People we may never meet, but still we can create a difference through reaching out with the power of prayer and directing that healing energy into their lives. Will you all now join with me as we begin our evening together in prayer? As we meet in the presence of God, we ask that each and every one of us this evening may become a channel for that wonderful healing energy that as it touches our physical being, it almost passes through us and moves forward into our world. We understand at this time that humanity as a whole is dealing with the challenge of COVID-19. And there are many people in our world who are sick battling this virus. Tonight, let us together ask that that healing energy may touch each and every soul in our world who is in need. We know that that transformation that it brings with it can bring upliftment and healing and a greater spiritual awareness as we take a holistic approach to our healing practice and our lived experience each and every one of us in our own way seeks father to step forward that we may all provide a channel but collectively we can also create a greater energy that will extend beyond this group and manifest itself around our world. Amen. Thank you, David, for opening our service in prayer. I'd like to share with you now the chosen reading for our time together, and it's called Walk Together. We should walk together, yet, not as one. 
but in a way that our shadows are separate and distinct, such that our souls are unbound and free. We should share our time, yet not give all your time, nor take all of someone else's time, for in order to develop to the fullest, to be free, we must have solitude and individuality. Let people wander in solitude when they need to be alone. Yet be near when they need you. Share your love. Give freely of your love, but do not smother anyone. The soul must breathe a free air. Take love, but do not demand it, for love given of obligation is stale and without life. We should share our lives, but do not try to shape another's life. When you share your life, do not let it revolve around you. If, if someone shares their life, accept them as they are. Do not attempt to change them to fit your dreams. Respect them for who they are, not for what they were or one day may be. If someone shares themselves with you, do not allow them to limit your freedom or bind your soul. Share your minds, thoughts, goals, values and dreams. Develop these within yourself without restriction or loss of freedom. So free your soul. Free yourself. So that you may develop these within yourself without restriction or loss of freedom. So free your soul. They may wander together as they develop in freedom. As you share your lives, as you walk through life, know that you can share your love, but not your soul, for it must be free. And friends, I'm now going to share some music with you for a few moments. I invite you to reflect on those words and to use that time to begin to think about that healing presence which gathers around us now.
I now invite Minister David Bruton to come forward and to share with you some words for this service. Thank you, Alf. As long as there have been human beings, there have been attempts to heal the sickness experienced by the human body. In all recorded societies over the ages, there have been people who have used their healing knowledge and gifts to aid in the healing process. The oldest known healing practices were found within shamanism, possibly the world's oldest religion. In the shamanic healing practices, the shaman, healer priest, would enter into an altered state of consciousness and journey to non-ordinary planes of existence to obtain help for his sick patient. Different civilizations developed different traditions of healing. There have been the Indian yogis. In ancient Egypt, there was the tradition of the healer priest. China, ancient Greece, Polynesian Kahumas, and American Indians all have their separate traditions and methods of healing. The Essenes, a Jewish sect among whom Jesus of Nazareth lived and studied for years, lived around the Dead Sea in Palestine about three centuries BC and into the first century of the Christian era before they were destroyed by the Romans. The Essenes had very developed spiritual ideas and practiced spiritual healing. The Cathar community in southern France continued the work of the Essenes until they too were destroyed by the Catholic Church. All ancient healing practitioners shared similar ideas about the nature of healing. It is not possible to heal, heal the body separately without reference to the mind and the soul. They recognized that the body was only the outward form of the non-visible spiritual being in which there existed an imbalance or disharmony at some level or levels of our energetic being and that the mind's role in controlling our physical state was crucial. Recognition of the mind's role in regulating our health began to be recognized through the modern studies of psychiatry and psychology. In the late 19th century, Madame Helena Blavatsky formed Modern Theosophy, a study of mystical insights into our divine nature as revealed by mystics over the ages. She taught, among other things, that the mind can cure the body. The 19th century interest in spiritualism led to a greater understanding of our spiritual nature. And thanks to the spiritualist movement and also the teachings of the Christian Science Church, spiritual healing became an accepted practice. The New Age movement, which began in America in the late 20th century, popularized the idea of healing or energy balancing once again. The work of various healing organizations in the 20th century helped spread knowledge of the power of healing or energy balancing and courses were devised to train healers. The inaugural meeting of the Healing Forum took place at Stansted Hall on the 12th of October 2016 which saw four major UK healing organizations joining together to create an informal dialogue between themselves. The Confederation of Healing Organizations, 
the CHO, the British Alliance of Healing Associations, Baha, UK Healers, and the Spiritualist National Union, all working together to promote healing practice. Healing Awareness Week was established back in 2017. And this year we mark our third event, which has proved to be bigger and better than ever. Healing Awareness Week was established as a vehicle to promote healing practice throughout the UK and to raise awareness of what a positive effect healing can have on our health and well being. Collectively, the four national bodies represent many thousands of healers and complementary therapists, all of whom are dedicated to share a positive healing energy in our world. This year, for the first time, we have introduced the Big Heal, which is a simple mechanism through which healers are collectively creating and feeding a pool of love and healing energy which can be accessed literally by anyone in the world who is in need. They can tune in and through drawing that healing energy to themselves, they can find a benefit. If you have never experienced healing, why not give it a try? Between eight o'clock and 8.30 every night this week, you can simply go to the Healing Awareness website at www.healingawarenessweek.org and watch a short video which will allow you to access this wonderful pool of energy. The Healing Forum, in addition to working on developing and promoting the Healing Awareness Week, is also working towards sharing best practice within healing organisations. And it also supports academic research into healing with a view to fostering a wider acceptance within the medical profession of what we have as healers to offer. We strongly believe that if more healers were allowed to work within the NHS trusts, this would facilitate a more holistic approach to healthcare here in the UK which can, we know, bring countless benefits to our society as a whole. As we meet here together tonight, we should also remember that today in the UK, we have marked the 75th anniversary of victory in Europe, when a long lasting and enduring peace settled over the continent that has brought prosperity to the peoples of Europe. As we remember those that gave their lives in that war situation, as the generations move forward and we mark this important anniversary, especially during these difficult times, let us collectively send out a prayer of peace and healing into our world that will extend out beyond our own communities and unite everyone together through the true brotherhood of man. Every organisation, whether it be a group of like-minded people, or a large conglomerate needs to look to the future. Our history informs our view. But if we are prepared to look forward and to embrace change and to retain the inspiration that the spirit world afford us, we can together build a stronger and more cohesive society and we can bring about a greater caring effect 
into our world. Not only into our own lives, not only into the lives of those that we love, not only within our own circle of friends and colleagues, but extending out, moving forward. May everyone throughout the world who has been touched by the power of healing fully appreciate the potential for change it can bring to our lives and the lives of others. Drawn from the God force, it recognises no borders, barriers or divides that humanity has created. It pays no homage to caste, creed or social standing in our world, but is simply given, not in faith, but rather in surety, that through love and the healing energy, we can transcend the challenges humanity faces. And when all is reckoned, that greater power of love will prevail. Thank you, David. And it's good sometimes for us to focus on the implications of healing and how positive they are to us all. And Healing Awareness Week allows us to do that and to reflect on how fundamental healing is to the religion of spiritualism. I'm now going to invite Tim to come forward and to direct you through this next part of our service. Tim. Thank you, Al. Thank you, David. That was very inspiring. What we'd like to do tonight is there are 107 of us gathered here. That's a very powerful potential healing circle. Each of us, whether we think we're a healer or not, is a healer. We all have that potential. There is spirit within us all. So what I'm going to ask you to do tonight is to focus on that thought. You are all capable, you are all spiritualist healing medium. It's something we can all do. And we can do it through the power of our thought and intention. If we believe we are spiritually healing mediums, then we are literally capable of doing that. And when I say that, what our task is tonight is to create a portal of power which the spirit world can use to channel divine love into this world. Now, I'm not going to limit the size of that portal. I'm not going to use words like doorways or gateways. Those are human terms. What we will open through our intention and our power of thought tonight will be a limitless portal between this world and the world out there. Arthur Conan Doyle once said, we should think of things not as spirit world up there, but the spirit world out there. And that's what we're going to do tonight. The first thing is I'm going to ask Al to play some music and an image will appear on your screen. And I just want you to focus on the fact that this is your time to open yourselves, your spirit self, to connect to the spirit world and allow them to use that portal together to send healing energy into this world. So take a few minutes, allow it to happen, allow yourself to settle, your mind to settle, and allow yourself to feel the energy together, because we are now together, 107 people with one intention, to send healing into this world from the spirit world. So Alva, if you could just open that up, please. <laughs>
Thank you. Now I hope you all felt the energy passing through you, the power of that energy, the power of you allowing that energy to come together and pour into this world, into our pool of healing energy. That was very powerful and very calming. And just for a few minutes of focus and, and focusing your intention and your power of thought to do exactly what we've just done, you have charged that pool of healing energy. You have created a reservoir which now we can use to do something completely different. So what I want you to do for the second part of this energy is to refocus your thought. You have allowed God's healing love to enter our world from spirit. It's now time to deliver that healing love through your spirit to the spirit of those loved ones who need God's intervention right now. Now in a moment, Al will play a second piece of music. This time, through your intention, through the power of your thought, working together as a vast healing circle, this time I want you to allow yourself to think of those loved ones and those who risk all to help those affected by this man-made virus to draw from the pool of healing love and direct it where it's needed. So all you have to do this time is focus on a friend, a family member, a person you know who's working very hard in the healthcare sector, or the planet itself. But you can now draw on that healing energy. So Al will play the music, and I just want you to focus completely on that, exactly what you've done, but in the opposite direction. Feel the energy passing through and out now into this world. Al, if you could restart.
And just allow yourself to come back now, back into the awareness, back into the physical body. And just become aware of what you have just taken part in. A healing circle made up of people from all over the planet, a truly international, global brotherhood of man and women with one intention, and that intention was to bring the divine healing energy through the spirit world and into this world to help as many people as we can. So you have just taken part in something unique and very special, and I can only thank you for doing that. But do to please go to the Healing Awareness website, healingawarenessweek.org, and add a few more opportunities to increase the energy in the pool of energy and to send energy to the loved ones you can. The site is there, the opportunity is there. You've just felt the true power of divine healing love. It was wonderful and I can only thank you for doing that. And I hope that by your effort, we will have achieved a major breakthrough in the health and healing of the planet. So thank you again. And I'm going to hand you back to Al. Thank you, Tim, for leading us through that experience and allowing us to experience that both giving and receiving healing is simple, accessible, and yet powerful. And that we all have a part to play in conveying God's healing love into this planet, needed so badly at this time. And so I echo Tim's gratitude and thank you all for your generosity of spirit in providing that healing energy for those who need it. I'm now going to ask Minister David Bruton to close our service in prayer. The power that unites each and every one of us together is the power of God. We cannot contain that power, but rather it is within us as we are within it. We give our humble thanks that individually and collectively we have been able to serve tonight to bring forward that energy. We do not know the eventual destination of where that energy will end. But through our collective action, we know we have made a difference in the lives of many, many people. Our thoughts go to all of those people on the front line that are working often in incredible difficult situations and all too often with no thought for their own safety they are sharing that love for humanity and each one of us has the capacity to extend that love into our world to create throughout humanity a stronger network for good. We give our thanks for the healing energy that has been shared. And our only prayer can be that as it reaches out into our world, it brings freedom from pain. It brings peace of mind. It brings spiritual upliftment and a greater awareness 
of you in our lives. Amen. Thank you, David. I'd like to thank our speakers for our healing service today, Minister David Bruton and Tim Smith, both of them our representatives to the Healing Forum who have helped to organise Healing Awareness Week, which is now an annual event. As I've said, you can find more about Healing Awareness Week at healingawarenessweek.org. And if you check the Big Heal page, you can continue to partake in the giving and receiving of healing. And I thank all of you here for joining us and spending a small part of your day to give such an important thing to this world.